This time last year, I was preparing for my med school interviews, revising old stuff for my mock exams, whilst also trying to learn new content for A-level bio, chem and maths. And even though I still ended up getting decent results, it's so clear to me now what I was doing wrong that stopped me from going from my A's to A stars. And so in this video, I'm gonna tell you all my mistakes that you need to avoid if you really want those A stars. So it's Christmas time now, and you've either already done your mocks or you're gonna do them very soon. But it's not the mocks you should really be worried about. It's about what you do after that. And no, I'm not talking about the week you wanna take off as a break, because you've been revising a lot go ahead you totally deserve that i'm on about what you want to do after that to your real a-level exams because i remember so many people last year were saying that they were going to finish the content way before the school did so that they could focus on exam questions earlier and when i heard that it sounded like a sick plan so naturally i was like you know what i'm gonna do that as well but only a few weeks in and i realized i was making a big mistake because all i cared about was trying to finish the content as quick as possible it meant that i was just speed running every youtube video i was watching so i wasn't even understanding the stuff and because all this content was new to me since I was learning it and not revising it meant that i was spending my own time at home learning this stuff and i could have actually used that time in a way better way by focusing on my older weaker topics that i did for my mock exams so eventually i did scrap revising like that and i went for a way better way which was to split my week into two where on mondays to thursdays i would just focus only on year 13 content and that was mainly the stuff that i learned from the same week that meant that on the weekends i could focus on older weaker topics mainly from year 12 but also some of the year 13 content from um, September and October and by the way when I say I was revising this content I wasn't just going over the content I was doing exam questions as well so it's not me saying that pre-reading isn't good no it just depends on how you can make sure you're not then wasting your time in school so if you know you can take extra exam questions to do in your lesson to see how well you've done meaning that if you get the questions wrong you can then just switch back to listening in the lesson that's you making good use of your time because in these last couple of months you really don't want to be wasting any time at all and anyways if your plan was to just leave all your exam questions to the last month or two then trust me that's way too risky and you'd rather be doing them regularly throughout the year so you can just see that natural improvement but you just doing an exam question and then leaving it simply isn't enough you have to be doing it the correct way which leads me to my second mistake not even doing exam questions properly and i know i know i've even made videos myself to tell you lot how to do exam questions properly i had the perfect plan but i never really executed it because i'm pretty sure you can relate to this you know when you've done an exam paper and you've done quite bad in it but because it's early february time you tell yourself that it's calm i've only started i'm supposed to get better along the way that was my mistake because i've realized now you're supposed to spend quality time marking your paper and watching those walkthrough videos even if it seems long because that is the main point of doing past papers in the first place if you want to get those better grades even though i did it quite late into my revision for a level biology honestly watching how you correctly answer the graph and table questions which personally for me i found quite difficult is probably the main reason i'd say i went from getting b's consistently in year 13 to then an a or very close to an a star in my real thing and my second mistake with exam questions was that i wanted to make anki cards on all the questions i got wrong and that kind of was the problem because I was adding all the questions I got wrong from every past paper and every website I used. But before I knew it, I was already at 100 cards for each subject. And that completely put me off because I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to review all of that by the end of the week. But with your case, I'd still recommend you do that, just not on the way I was doing it. So instead of all the questions, focus on getting like three of the hardest questions from each paper and adding it. In fact, with me, I was even planning to review it every day, but instead only on Sundays because it felt like the perfect way to end the week, not Advising anything new or difficult just going over questions you've already done okay so if you got a levels this year for maths biology and chemistry then listen up if you want that a start because these are some of the really specific things i regret not fixing earlier on so for maths it was just me not knowing which resource is actually the best madas maths buy some maths international papers or textbook questions which is so many different combinations that people were using that i found myself starting with buy some maths and going on to madas maths because i heard that if you can do these questions then you can do any then that's that had taken too long and it was already March and I didn't want to risk not finishing all the topics so then I just stuck to them past papers until the exams came so I didn't stick to one resource but the truth is you sticking to one resource isn't going to get you a BOC anyway in fact if you do it consistently or properly you have a much higher chance of getting that A star than if you're switching between all the different resources so personally if you ask me now if you're really going for that A star then the two resources I would recommend mixed exercise from the textbooks and Malice Maths 
because the mixed exercises are basically like end of chapter questions they tell you whether you understand the topic in the first place anyway if you pair that with maths maths then i think that's the a star method because with maths maths you have five levels of difficulty in the questions from one star to five star most people say that the four star questions are like the really hard a level questions so if you're confident with them then you basically sort for a level maths but what you also see with maths maths is that each level has crazy amounts of questions so you only have to do like three to five from each level to you're fully confident for the topic and like i said before if you add the questions you get wrong from maths maths onto anki and review it weekly until your exams then i promise you that's going to be a game changer for biology all i'd say is that give equal value to each paper because the only real reason i'd say i didn't get an a star for biology is that i didn't practice enough on my essays for paper three and that made sense because that was the only part of the exam that when i came out the hall i thought that i could have done way better if i just practiced that tiny bit more on my essays but i'll make a whole nother video on how to get an a or a star in a level biology so subscribe for that and then for chemistry you already know it's an a level with so many calculations moles gases mass spectrometry if you do get a calculation question wrong then don't be tempted to just look at the mark scheme and lie to yourself and say that you understand it force yourself to find two three other questions and keep practicing it until you're fully confident because i remember my study leave in may i just had a feeling when i was revising that they were going to put an nmr question in which if you don't know is basically where you have to guess which element it is from the information they give and they are really hard but because they're also worth so many marks i just forced myself to keep going over it until i got to a somewhat decent level with it and guess what it ended up coming up in the exam and from what i heard from other people i did get full marks on that so watching walkthrough videos for a level chemistry of the right youtubers will help a lot so i'll try to leave some of the most helpful videos i found in the description and this last mistake in my opinion is a big one and it's how you decide that yeah I've done enough revision for the day because I can't lie early into my revision I was thinking a lot about how many hours I was doing in a day and that was because on TikTok I'd see people revising for A-levels and they were consistently doing seven hours every day and it would just make you feel like you weren't doing enough it was only later that I realized what matters more is whether you actually got a complete what you want to do for the day so for me waking up an hour earlier before school just to only do three questions is pointless and also spending all day revising but you leave your last task unfinished that's also pointless as well because for me it just makes the next day harder where you're trying to catch up on things from the day before and then it keeps building up so you want to be really realistic in the way that you don't plan how many hours you want to do or how many videos questions and topics you want to go over instead because if you plan to revise consistently these next few months then it will feel very long but you also want to have a balanced lifestyle as well and trust me saying all day revising isn't going to help you want to make time for things that you enjoy as well so that you don't get stressed out and burnt out by the time that your a-levels do come and those are basically my biggest mistakes that i made during my time from how i was being lazy with the way that i did my exam questions the little things for each subject but then just the overall way that i could have organized my time better january onwards so if you do build on these mistakes and i promise you you won't regret a thing on a source day so if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more a-level and gcc tips and also how my day has been looking like as a uni student then do subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace